IBM MQ server is an integration engine. It integrates two business systems over the network to exchange business data with each other as messages. IBM MQ server provides common MQ API. IBM MQ server provides one API, it is MQ API. Using MQ API, any program can connect IBM MQ server to perform either put or get operations on IBM MQ server. Whenever my source business system wish to exchange business data with remote service, first it defines that data as message. That message contains, business message contains two parts, MQMD and payload. Payload is nothing but message body. Uh, then sorry, this business, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, please. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, this is Yograj. Yeah, yes, uh, just wanted to ask, uh, is these classes will be available after this uh, session? Because uh, you want me to uh, make a note on this, because I cannot concentrate I will more. Forward. I, will, I will forward a uh, complete yeah. document, okay? No need to write anything, just okay. concentrate only to listen. Fine, fine. Okay. Thank you. My source program, defines business data as message, then it connects IBM MQ server. On IBM MQ server, we have an object, it is Q. Q is an object, Q is only resource we have on IBM MQ server to hold business data. Q is a file, Q is a data structure, Q is a safe place to store messages, Q is a container to hold business data on IBM MQ server. Source program connects IBM MQ server, it opens business queue, then it will perform put operation. Put is nothing but write. Source program writes business data on IBM MQ server. Business message stay on queue. Remote service connects IBM MQ server, then it will perform get operation on business queue. Get is nothing but read. On IBM MQ server, major operations are put and get. One program writes data on IBM MQ server, one program reads data on IBM MQ server. Bundle of messages arrives on IBM MQ server, bundle of messages are forwarded to remote service. That means IBM MQ means store and forward mechanism. IBM MQ means store and forward mechanism. Source application dump messages on IBM MQ server. IBM MQ server hold all those messages with the help of an object queue. Whenever remote service requests the data, simply queue forward. Okay, are you clear up to this? Here MQ stands for messaging and queuing. MQ stands for messaging and queuing. Messaging and queuing framework implemented by IBM MQ component. IBM MQ is a common communication methodology to distributed systems over the network. Messaging is a mechanism to define business data as message. Queuing is a mechanism to hold business data on IBM MQ server. Here, whenever my business application wish to send business data on IBM MQ server, on remote service, first it defines the data as message. That is messaging mechanism. Then it sends message on IBM MQ server. We use Q object to hold business data. Until unless processed by remote service, the data will stay on Q object only. Okay, good. See here. Just look at here. <laughs>
IBM MQ means store and forward mechanism. IBM MQ is an integration engine. It, it integrates two distributed programs over the network to exchange business data. One minute here. Service this to send data on, on remote service. It will define the data as message. Then it will put on IBM MQ server. Whenever remote service requests data on IBM MQ server, Q forward. Business message delivery can happen once and only once. It doesn't support duplication delivery. Once if remote service read the data on Q object, the data no more available. Here applications exchanging data as message. That message contains two parts, MQMD header and message body. MQMD stands for MQ message descriptor. Message descriptor describes message body. Describing is nothing but it defines message priority, message persistence, message expiry, message type and a group ID, message ID, correlation ID and message sequence number. That kind of metadata is contained by MQMD header. Message body can have XML data, it can have text data, binary data, anything. IBM MQ server doesn't produce any business message. It doesn't provide any business data on business message. Source MQ program must produce business message with business data. Remote MQ program must consume that business message on IBM MQ server. IBM MQ is not responsible to construct messages. It is not responsible to define business data dynamically. Just it can fold, it can follow. In our IBM MQ, predefined message types are four. They are datagram, request, reply, and report. Here you are not responsible to define any message type. While producing business message, based on transaction data, source application defines message type. If message type is datagram, remote service will process the data on IBM MQ server. It doesn't send any reply to the source. If my source sending request message, remote service must send reply message. Here report message only produced by IBM MQ server. Report message in the sense that IBM MQ server can give acknowledgement on message delivery. It can give acknowledgement on message arrival to the remote server, to the source service. Source application sending messages here. Whenever messages reach IBM MQ queue, queue manager can give an acknowledgement to the source program. Whenever IBM MQ server can deliver messages on remote service, again it can give an acknowledgement to the source program about message delivery. The acknowledgement queue manager produces as report messages, it will send to the source program. This is MQ sample message. You can find here message descriptor. On message descriptor, we will have fields like persistence, priority, encoding, expiry, message type, and group ID, message ID, correlation ID. At last, you can find message body. Okay, message body holds actual business data. MQMD header holds description about the payload, description about the message body. Okay. IBM MQ server is a resource <coughs> manager. Yes. yes, please. You are showing me about the message fields and all. So whether uh, yes. we will be knowing from which application the message we received or which app server we received it from and all. Can you find this? Put app name. Yes. 
okay. so on. So you can find so the name of the application at what time this message has been constructed on which date this message has been constructed okay, okay. everything so even the message expiry period whatever they have defined yeah. all these things will be there yes yeah yeah everything okay. please uh, morally understand yes yeah. application is the owner of the message is it right yes application is the owner of the message yeah owner of the message can decide message expiry it can decide message priority it can decide message persistence it can define message id it can define group id it can define entire message okay whenever application doesn't define anything on message mqmd header ibm mq server takes responsibility to decide assume assume Your what is expiry? This message expiry is unlimited. What my point? Minus one yeah. in the sense unlimited. Unlimited. If application decides this message expiry, IBM MQ server doesn't decide. Whenever application doesn't decide this message expiry, IBM MQ server decides as unlimited. Why? Because IBM MQ server is not owner of the message. Okay. At the same time. whenever application decides message persistent ibm mq server doesn't decide if application doesn't decide ibm mq server decides here we have two levels morally application level and ibm mq server level first precedence goes to application next precedence goes to ibm mq server is it clear morally yes ma'am See here, every server instance is a resource manager. If you take WebSphere application server, if you take the database, database server is a resource manager. Its resources are tables. In the same way, IBM MQ server is a resource manager. Its resources are queues. source application put business data as messages on queues on ibm mq server here you have jdi application it acts as remote service it will get business data on ibm mq server it inserts into db engine so here jdi application enable communication with integration engine at the same time it enable communication with the database this jdi application getting business data on one resource manager it inserting into another resource manager on ibm mq server business data stored as messages on db engine business data stored as records on ibm mq server business data storage is temporary on db engine business data storage is permanent here we will on ibm mq server we will have queues to hold business data on db engine we will have tables to hold business data on tables business data stored as records permanently on queues business data stored as messages temporarily once if you compare ibm mq server with database it is easy to understand yes yograj and murali are you clear yes sir so ibm mq means set of services set of services are nothing but mq objects mq objects are pre defined ibm mq built on java so on ibm mq server everything we define an object three different objects are seven they are queue manager queue channel listener process name list and service these seven are ibm and queue three different objects by configuring these seven three different objects you can allow two distributed programs to communicate with each other by exchanging data 
IBM MQ server can support synchronous communication and asynchronous communication. Synchronous in the sense, both the systems, remote and source, must be available to each other at the same time to exchange business data. IBM MQ means set of mechanisms. IBM MQ defined remote messaging mechanism, client and server messaging mechanism, clustering messaging mechanism, publish and subscribe. These many messaging mechanisms are defined by IBM MQ to allow two programs to communicate with each other by exchanging data as messages over the network. These mechanisms we configure using predefined MQ objects. We use seven predefined objects. We can configure any messaging mechanism on distributed systems. Here we are describing IBM MQ component. What is IBM MQ? IBM MQ means store and forward mechanism. IBM MQ means set of services. IBM MQ means set of messaging mechanisms. IBM MQ is a resource manager. It manages resources. They are queues. How messaging and queuing works? As we discussed, one program defines business data as message. It will send on IBM MQ server. One program will get the business data on IBM MQ server. Here communication might be in one way. It might be in two ways. Here, application is sending on Q1. It's receiving on Q2. Application be receiving messages on Q1. It's sending on Q2. It might be one way. It might be in two ways. Here, communicating programs can run at different times. Assume application A hosted in India, application B hosted in New York City. These two distributed systems hosted in two different time zones. They might run in two different times at two different times. So here, application A no need to wait for B. So it can dump. Business data on Q1. Whenever remote service comes on online, it connects IBM MQ server. It can process the data. So it supports synchronous and asynchronous communication. Please listen me. IBM MQ server enables reliable messaging service between two distributed systems. Reliable messaging is nothing but communication can happen. Without data loss, without data duplication. IBM MQ supports one-to-one -one communication, one-to-many communication, many-to-one communication, many-to-many -many communication. But finally, the outcome is IBM MQ supports one-to-one -one communication, program-to-program -program communication, system-to-system -system communication. Interface to interface. That means end to end. That's it. Okay. Here, uh, the, the best example to understand about this: Java supports single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance. But the outcome is Java supports single inheritance. So here, IBM MQ supports one-to-one -one communication. How it is? See here, application A has sent three messages on Q1. We have three remote services. They are B, C, and D. Suppose remote service B consumed messages, consumed three messages on Q1. So these three messages no more available on Q1. So application C and D cannot get these three messages. Q becomes empty. So your communication happens between application A and B only. So one to one communication. Are you clear, Murali and your uh, branch? Uh, yes, mother. Mother, one query here. Yes. So if application A wants to put a message, but it yes. needs to send the same message to three different applications, same message. Yes. So whether it is it send. possible, or whether yes, we need to? It is possible. It is possible. 
it is possible morally i will show you that clearly in our lab practical how a source program can send same business data to many services okay please remember here we must define we must separate messages delivery to every program suppose assume your application a wish to send messages on application b and on application c and on application d application a have sent messages on q1 they are three kind of message belongs to b application yellow message belongs to c application red color message belongs to d application so here whenever you allow many applications on q1 to get the respective messages they must define criteria to process the messages application development becomes hard okay why because application application b must search its respective message on q1 okay so they must define the logic a lot is it right yes yes morally and yograms please understand this yeah yeah morally the yes, able sir. to hear me yeah i am able to hear you uh, sorry i didn't get it clearly so oh, my query yeah. no i will yes. explain my query yeah. clearly first so yes. i am putting up a message m1 considered uh, from a uh, program a to the q1 so i want the same message m1 to be delivered to bcd whether i need to uh, the happen. program okay it won't happen it won't so i need happen. to put you three different define. messages yes 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 okay this is my query you must define one more key q1 q2 q3 application a will produce business messages three that means implicitly concept only one message but it can produce multiple copies one copy it sends on q1 for b application one copy it sends on q2 for c application one copy it will send on q3 for d application okay okay so at a time it can only send one message and it can receive one message yes yes so in a clear in right for every application there should be a separate queues yeah okay you can allow many applications on one queue to get messages no problem but application development becomes very hard okay they must define logic in their program a lot to search their respective messages on queue okay so to reduce application development hard they will uh, they define separate queues to process messages normally without defining any logic any criteria in their application code is it clear morally and yogrash yeah okay this one what ibm says about nq once and only once delivery guaranteed delivery if message is persistent message ibm nq server can deliver that business data on remote service in any circumstances if business data is non persistent data ibm nq server doesn't assure business data delivery in the event of ibm nq server recycle non persistent messages are discarded only persistent messages are restored on queue okay so that here ibm nq says about nq guarantee delivery but the data must be persistent data then only it happens if that if, if the data is non persistent data non persistent data loss takes place but non persistent messages contains uh, the data which is uh, not transaction data persistent data means the message contains transaction data non persistent messages contains non transaction data which is not uh, that much valuable to their business okay that kind of data they will define as uh, non persistent messages if the data is essential to their business they define as persistent message okay are you clear here any oh, confusion yeah. so every data is very important so so they can define all the data as persistent only why they define it as non persistent no see here 
in our business uh, some kind of information we must pass to the end user is it right suppose if you take a, a bank why if you take any bank every bank they must share uh, their principles and uh, and some kind of uh, offers to the end user suppose as you uh, they are offering 10% rate of interest to the senior citizens on january 1st okay this is not transaction data okay this is not transaction data this is information kind of data they must pass this data to the end user okay if the application fails to deliver to the end user there is no effect on business that much okay is it clear suppose they are offering car loans they are offering uh, home loans sometimes application fails to forward the data to the end user even if they fails to forward the data to the end user there is no problem the for, after for some time again the application can produce same data to the end user okay repeatedly it happens but if you take the deposit or withdrawal or any kind of change on your account it must be persistent you are going to deposit the money on your account on day 1 on day 2 on day 3 every transaction is valuable to their business that is the business data valuable business data they should not lose the business data at any cost is it right if data is transaction data to their business they will define as persistent if data is non transaction data they will define as non persistent message are you clear yogra general uh, okay. Suppose you, yes, have, yeah. you will have Naptol. Naptol is a service provider. Is it right? Online portal, online shopping portal. We will have Flipkart, Naptol, many portals. You will have. All these are all service providers. Service provider will capture end user uh, order. Then they will uh, communicate with the bank application. Then they will communicate with the suppliers. Then they accomplish that business need. They confirm the order with the end user. Is it right? So here, to this business service, what is the persistent data end user order? End user order is the persistent data to the business. They should not lose end user order at any cost. That is the only business of uh, Naptol. That is the only business of Mantra or something. Is it clear? Yeah, just uh, this is one kind of uh, example. Yeah. I will show you that animation clearly. How it happens over the network. One minute, please. Yeah. Let me open that animation. Then we will get clear idea about our component. Just a minute. See here. You can find shops, online orders. Here, this is a service provider application. They are receiving service provider receiving end user orders on online as messages. Then, service provider consumes order messages. Then, my service provider must confirm end user credit balance. And they must confirm stock levels on end user order. If stock levels and credit balance end up on end user order, my service provider deliver shipment details to the suppliers. Suppliers will consume the shipment details. Then they will confirm with the service provider. Service provider will confirm order with end user is it right here distributed systems we integrated to accomplish a business requirement their business requirement is end user log an order on that order service provider must get the money on his account he must check the stock levels in his reports he must ship shipment details to the suppliers this is one business transaction to accomplish this business need 
many distributed systems must communicate with each other by exchanging business data. Here, these uh, business systems uh, might uh, host it on uh, Windows, they might host it on Linux, they might host it on ZOS. The programs are might written in Java, C, C++, .NET, many programs. IBM MQ Server is able to allow two distributed systems to communicate with each other without data loss, without data duplication. Yeah, yeah, Murali, are you clear? Madhu, yes, sir. This thing, video showing how the transactions happens and how the applications communicate each other to process order. So, where is the MQ stands there? Like, yes, wherever you go, there is IBM MQ. Okay. Wherever you go, there is IBM MQ. See here. Wherever you go, there is IBM MQ. It is a, it, it helps us to help the applications to communicate each other. Yes. Okay. The, 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 the respective application might be ready, it might not be ready. Okay, whatever the data you wish to send, the data store on the respective system. The remote service, when it comes along, it will get the data. Most of the times, IBM MQ server is used to enable asynchronous communication. It supports synchronous also, but most of the times they use it to enable asynchronous communication. Suppose uh, assume uh, every, yeah, yes, yes, yes please, uh, Murali. So, yeah, you have that. So, you, all the application, sorry, application should have MQ installed in that uh, system. No, no, no. MQ installation in the sense, they will have an MQ API. See, here I will show you one. C program, how a C program will write a program, how a Java program will write a program. Sorry. I will show you that clearly, then you will, will, then you will get good control what is the application all things. See here, this is a sample program here. Look at here. Sampling C program, it puts messages on message queue. Is it right? Wait one minute. See here. <coughs> what this is? I'm not uh, good at uh, programming and all. I am. I don't know. No problem, man. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. The MS office also doesn't require. Okay, free skill set, nothing required to get running on IBM MQ to work on WMQ system to work, to administrate MQ objects. Okay. See here. It is a header file. What is the header file? CMQC.h. This contains everything. This header file they will get, then they will configure in their cross path. They will write the program like this. They implement MQ API. MQ API contains MQI calls. MQI calls is nothing but here we call as functions. Please see here. Yeah, I will explain it one minute. Please. Give me a chance to uh, write it here. Then only you can understand clearly. IBM MQ means set of services. Set of services are nothing but MQ objects. MQ objects are seven. They are Q manager, Q channel, listener, process, name list, and service. And service. In these seven objects, in these seven objects, Q manager is an initial object. Before talk about queue manager, I will show you one thing here. IBM MQ is platform independent. IBM MQ is programming language free. IBM MQ is protocol free. Any program can connect IBM MQ server to perform either put or get. 
you can configure IBM MQ server on any platform. It support any kind of protocol. Here this is hardware on top of hardware operating system. On top of operating system we install IBM MQ. It runs as a service. On top of IBM MQ service you define MQ objects. In these seven MQ predefined objects, Q manager is an initial object. Q manager is foremost object. Until unless you define Q manager, you cannot define rest of the MQ object. Q manager itself MQ server. Q manager itself MQ engine. Q manager is a subsystem. Q manager is a subsystem. Subsystem means it is topmost object. It controls rest of the MQ objects. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. Q manager is single point of contact to every distributed program to perform either put or get operations on IBM MQ server. If there is no Q manager, there is no MQ objects. Q manager is everything in our IBM MQ. Once if you define Q manager, in this Q manager control, you can define Q to hold business data. You can define channel. You can define listener. You can define process, service, name list. All, all, all MQ objects you can define in Q manager control. Let me finish this for your understanding. Q channel. This is process service name list. This is listener LSQ. Whenever remote, whenever source program wish to put business data on IBM MQ server, first program connects Q manager. Then it can access business view to put business data. Whenever remote service wish to get business data on business view, it must connect IBM MQ server. That means it must connect Q manager. Then only it can perform get operation. To administrate these seven predefined objects, in our IBM MQ we have predefined commands. Predefined commands are three types. MQ predefined commands. Then two predefined commands are broadly divided into three types. They are control commands, MQSC commands. MQSC stands for MQ script commands. They are only 13, they are constant. TCF commands. Programmable command format. Here MQSC commands only 13. To administrate MQ objects, you must use MQSC commands. You must work with MQSC commands. I will show you MQSC commands clearly. Just a moment. Open your command form. Come out, clear the screen. Have you seen any command prompt here, uh, Mr. Murali? Have you seen any command prompt? Cursor is blinking here. Yes, mother. There is no command prompt. This is IBM MQ server console. This is WMQ system admin interface. We can call as Q manager control area. What it is? Q manager control area. At this console, if you try to execute something, it doesn't allow. 
right away it is going to list out valid MTSC commands at this console or this circuit. Is it clear? Yes, these 13 are MQSC commands. Using these 13, we administrate MQ predefined objects. As a WMQ system admin, we use MQSC command to administrate IBM MQ server. Control commands. Control commands in the sense, just assume we executed a command. We executed this command at OS level, is it right? This is OS level here. If you have a command prompt that becomes OS level. IBM MQ control commands we execute at OS level. IBM MQ, MQSC commands we execute at Q manager level. This is OS level. This is Q manager level. All are predefined here. All are predefined commands only. As a WMQ system admin, we concentrate on control commands and on MQSC commands. We won't look into PCF commands. This is completely belongs to program. We don't write any program. Okay. See area. Yeah, Mr. Morale, what it is? Connect to Q manager. What is function here? MQ connect. MQ con. Once if they connect Q manager, they must open business queue to put messages. Please read out this. Open the target message queue for the output. What is the function here? MQ open. Next, they will produce a message. They will produce message here. Then, please read out this. Put each buffer to the message queue. What is called? Uh, MQ put. So they will put message on queue using this call. Okay. Once if they perform the respect to operation, they must close the queue. So that they will use MQ close. Then, at last, what they will do? Disconnect so from, from IBM MQ server. Okay. IBM MQ server means here Q manager. Already they connected, no? They connected, they open Q, they perform Q operation, they close Q, so they can distance from IBM MQ server. Is it right? This is how a C programmer will write a program to connect IBM MQ server. If you take Java program, <coughs> one minute. This is a Java program which can communicate with IBM MQ server. Yeah, his name is Murali and Yograj. Yograj, please read out here. Create a correction correction manager. What they define? They define an object on this class. Is it right? Yeah. On this constructor, they are defining respective Q manager name to connect. Once if they connect Q manager, please read out this at last. Access Q. That means they must open Q. Then they will produce a message. Hello world. Please read out your this one. To put messages. If they wish to get messages, Q dot get. Then they can close business queue, Q dot close. Then they then they disconnect from IBM MQ server. Have you seen this? This is how programmers will write program. Here we don't install IBM MQ on application system. We will provide one jar. They will put that jar into class path. They will have their normal Java installation and C installation. 
then they will access all those header files and uh, class files from jar file then they connect I, they can connect ibm mq server with the help of ibm mq client what is ibm mq client what is ibm mq server i will explain here you see this is computer one na? application hosted on computer one so here you install ibm mq client here you install IBM MQ client. On this host, what you install IBM MQ server? Suppose assume ya, if you want to open your Gmail, you will use, you will use browser. Browser is a client component. Okay. Whenever your Java program wish to communicate with the database, it will use JDBC drivers. JDBC drivers are client component is it right morally yes ma'am so here also we will have ibm mq server and ibm mq client we discuss these two components no problem ibm mq client provides runtime environment to an application to connect ibm mq server remotely ibm mq server is used to manage resources, resources are queued. Yes, the outcome is IBM MQ means uh, here uh, you will have around 20 to 25 control command 13 NPSC command. IBM MQ means 40 predefined command 7 predefined objects major operations are put and get messages arrives on IBM MQ server, messages are forwarded to the remote service. That is outcome. As a WMQ system admin, you are the responsible to install IBM MQ on distributed systems. You are the responsible to ship inactive log files on IBM MQ server. You are the responsible to create respective MQ objects on, I on IBM MQ server. You must allow source program to write business data, you must allow remote program to read data on IBM MQ server. That means grant authorities, revoke authorities. Manage connections on IBM MQ server. All these uh, things we are going to discuss.